brunettes. Who are you? I'm Emily. And who are you? I'm Sophie, I think. I've been trying to figure out who I am all week. Well, there we're already <laughs> going deep into it. We've got Pete on sound. And uh, and what's going on? Uh, nothing really, Em. I'm really fucking happy you got rid of those fucking farty sunflowers. Oh, my God. Last week. Did you smell that? Remember when last week? Okay. <laughs> we walked in the apartment last week to record the podcast. And remember when you walked in, we said to you, like, doesn't it smell like shit in here? And then we went on a whole rant about I how thought, easily my apartment smelled I thought someone must have shit. took a giant poopy right before we walked in. Well, you walked in. <laughs> and then we in. were sniffing it out after, after well, you no, left. Wait. You walked in and you were like, oh, my God. Like, did John take a shit? Because John was home and he was sick. And then you're like, I was like, oh, I guess he took a shit. He was like, we were poor thing has a gnarly so diarrhea. He's not feeling good. Yeah, because it smelled so bad. But then it was like only in that one spot by the dining room. We table. were actually hound dogs sniffing it out when you left. When you after you left, it Pete, we were like, spot. yeah, we were sniffing around. Like, where is this coming? Did like did someone the other day? Because I had or no? Did like austin who was over my house was like did he like crawl under my table and like shit on my floor like there's literally and, shit and on he, my floor. he might do that like i was like well when we were in high school he peed on my rug in my basement so i was like is this like the adult version of pissing on my rug did he climb under my dining room we've table all pe- peed on a rug and take his shit yeah <laughs> Well, precarious of peed on a rug. Oh God, <laughs> is that the thing? I probably peed on a rug once or twice. Yeah, but I thought there was shit, and then we sniff, we sniff, 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 and then I go, "Oh my God, Faye, it was the fucking dead sunflowers um, on you're my You're supposed table. to have flowers in your apartment to smell good, and they were just making the whole apartment rancid. Yeah, they they actually smell like no joke. If you took someone's ass and spread it and stuck your nose in there. <laughs> That's what these flowers really did smell like. It was gross. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm actually like so I, I can't I'm elated. I'm elated because Jennifer Aniston's on Instagram. Oh my gosh, I know that means the world to you. I thought she was married to Dave Matthews from your post. Because I put I've been everything Jennifer Aniston posts, I'm posting because I feel like I have to. Like you really <laughs> love her so much. No, it's really crazy. I didn't I forgot how much I loved her. When I saw that she joined Instagram, like I got the feeling you get when you're falling in love. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what celebrity does that to me. And I don't even think there is one. I don't. I always think it's weird when people have like actual celebrity crushes. Do you know that feeling you get when like you're excited about someone and like your chest feels like someone took a caffeine needle and injected caffeine into your chest? That's the feeling I keep getting every time I see that she posted something. You're actually like always in the honeymoon phase with with Jennifer Jennifer Aniston. Aniston. I'm not kidding you. And that's crazy. That's like. I feel like I'm smarter than that, I guess. And like, there's, I feel like a loser saying and that. And there's the type of people who will go up to like a famous person and they'll be like, oh my God, it's so nice to meet you. You are that person. Yes. You'd be like, oh my gosh, it's so great to meet you. I've been a huge fan. Well, I did I'm that the type too. of person that would just be like, hi. Adam Sandler, when I went to his SNL thing a couple months ago <laughs> at the after party, I literally saw him and I, the whole time I was at the after party, I was like, well, the night is not over until Adam Sandler and I shake hands, <laughs> like point blank. And then he was getting up to leave and I was like, John, one sec. And I like got up, got in his way on his way out. He's clearly tired. It's like four in the morning and he's leaving. And I was like, he saw me cause people were stopping him on the way out and he sees me like standing in line for him. And like, clearly he's trying to avoid me and his wife sees me too. And then they start and walking like, that and I was gonna, like, that one's going to come over here I, they know yeah. they're just like we could tell by her wandering crazy eyes that she's gonna get over here my crazy eyes yeah. and i literally stopped him and i was like Adam. hi i'm i'm really sorry like i know but you know i just want to let you know like you are so amazing you have such a big influence on me and like i really admire everything you do do you think it means anything to him oh, at this you. point thank you all oh, do you oh, think it oh. does yeah yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe he's like, what is he, like 60, No, 50? it's cool. It made you feel good, and that's all that matters. I know, and at I... at the end of the day, it's all about how we feel. Well, right. <laughs> no, really. You like, don't want to regret that moment when you saw Adam Sandler, and you didn't pay your respects. I know, and John said after to me, because he was like, I'm not fucking doing crazy that. crazy in my teeth right and now. Then, and then John <laughs> afterward was like, oh, I, 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 you kind of made me wish I did it. And I'm like, Aww. yeah, because guess what? Odds are, unless all of my dreams come true in the next 15 years, I will probably never meet Adam Sandler again. No, that's so true. And so if it's going to satisfy, give me peace of mind to know that Adam Sandler looked into my eyes and like <laughs> has, like doesn't know who I am, but like has shaken my hand and acknowledged that I am on this You earth. were there when then we met so Harry Styles, right? Yeah. When me and Austin, with him. you were the reason. Do you remember Austin wouldn't even go up and say hi to him? Cause he was like, I'm not going to say hi to him. We took a picture with him though. Right. Because I went up to him. I was like, Harry, come here. 
<laughs> I, just, I, then, I was like, hi, so nice to meet you. And I just saw, I feel like I, his spray tan got on my clothes. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, was so, so tan. tan. There was one time sophomore year of high school when Asha and I came into the city, like when we used to just like come into the city, like to be <laughs> here. Um, or no, we were, we, wait, we were shooting a, a project for our Chinese class. We were shooting a video. <laughs> or we, that we you, were, you took Chinese. <laughs> I know. We were walking around Chinatown and I was going up to people being like, hi, I love like your store. Like we were just like filming it or whatever. Anyway, we come into the city. We're on the we're at the Chipotle on Sixth Avenue and Christopher. Like you know by the Sprint store. Yeah. We're at that Chipotle. And we're sitting there, and I'm facing the street, and Asha's facing me. And I remember eating, and I just like happened to look up, and like 35 feet away, pretty far away, Cameron Diaz walks by, like outside, and I see her walk by, and I was like. Oh my god, it's Cameron Diaz. I drop my food. I get up. I walk out of the Chipotle, ignore Asha. I'm like, oh my god, it's Cameron Diaz. And I like just run out of the <laughs> and Chipotle. You tackle her to the ground. I, ta- I run outside and Asha's like, Emily. And like she follows me. I go like two blocks. I follow her and I'm like running up to her. Then we get to a red light and I'm like, hey. And she was like, Did she turn around? Yeah, she like sensed my crazy presence because I she probably heard my footsteps like mimicking hers. And then I get up to her and then she like was like, Hi. <laughs> Mimicking her footsteps. Yeah, and she was with a friend or something. And I was like, Hi, you're Carmen Diaz. And she was like, Yeah, hi. And I was like, Oh my, uh, it, I'm such a big fan. And like, obviously, I forget everything she's ever been in. And I was like, I'm such a big fan. And she was like, Oh, thank you. Um, what are you girls doing in the city? That's so sweet. She was so nice. I know. She was like, What are you girls doing in the city? And I was like, Oh, um, we're filming a ch- project for Chinese class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just for Chinese class. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah. She was like, Whoa, Oh, that's, love that's you. great. And I was like, Can I get a picture? And she was like, I'm sorry. What, no. if you started, what if you started talking to her in Chinese? <laughs> Well, I, I wish I could impress that impression for you right now, but I don't even you, remember Chinese. You don't Chinese. even remember Chinese anymore. Barely. But she said, I asked her for a picture and she was like, no. Oh, uh, well, that was, I don't it was do respectful that. that she even answered you. Yeah. But I've always been that girl who's like, I don't give a shit if I'm, it's so embarrassing. If I see a celebrity, I will make them know that I am here. <laughs> and maybe I mean, that's just like my dad in me. It is. Like, it's the total Craig in you. Like the Jew entitlement of like, I am, I'm here. I'm important. That might be a dad thing, though, because my dad would do the exact same thing. I'm like, what? It's a human. He'd be like, hey, how you doing? Oh, my God. He saw Alice Cooper at uh, oh, Balthazar God. in the city, and he, like, tackled him. Yeah. He was so excited to see him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was like, it's Alice Cooper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think if I saw fucking... See, I saw Jennifer Aniston, uh, uh, saying her name Getting gets me so hot excited. and heavy. When I saw Jennifer Aniston on The Tonight Show, I like couldn't even, I didn't even hear a word that came out of her mouth. I was just staring at her the whole time, but I didn't meet her in person. But if I were to genuinely like, cause I saw seeing her in person was already like, I couldn't handle it. If I were to, if she were to look me in my eyes and like actually acknowledge that I would exist, I think I would like, I think my heart rate would go up to a dangerous, like you'd have to watch me because something So do bad you have happen. sexual dreams about Jennifer Aniston? It's not even I sexual. feel like it has to be. I know. No. You're, Can I, I know, tell you? I know. the. It, you're on that. What's that scale? The spectrum. The spectrum. That the spectrum. Sexual... You're, you're very. No. no. You're, you want you want to have sex with her. No. The Can way I you're I talking about this? her, I think you want to have sex with her. No. Can I explain <laughs> Did you have a wet dream about her? Is this what gets you horny? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can I literally explain to you? Can yeah. I try and explain what this is? Because I'm actually so... Um, mesmerized by the power she has over me. It's <laughs> almost like the way I feel about her, I really hope people will relate to this. It's like when you were in like elementary school and you had like mostly probably female teachers and like you kind of want them to like see you outside of school and like maybe see you naked. <laughs> Don't make me feel crazy. <laughs> Can't relate. You can't make me feel crazy right now. I can't relate. Am to I that. doing something? No, I have. I have some, fucked, some up? fucked up crazy thoughts, but that Wait. is not one of them. Okay, no, no, no. I need to re-explain. A I need to re-explain. teacher in school, and how about our teacher in school who just got no, no, doctor. no, 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 doctor, no. He's a doctor. Don't. He's a dare. doctor. Stop. I don't want to talk about that because that was really upsetting, and I don't think it's all over the news. I'm I know. Facebook. Don't. But I, I had him, and I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I never even met one him. of our teachers from our high school just got arrested for sending nudes to a student and she's i'm really talk, upset about, about it him now don't I say his name I, w- I would never say his name and if we did we could about it, bleep it out doesn't feel but right do you not believe it 
It's not that I don't believe it, but I believe there's more to the story. And like, I don't think he's not a bad guy. He actually like did so much for the school and the students and the community. And he was such one of my favorite teachers. And like, I remember every, sure he's everyone like, would talk about him in a really positive way. I never met him. Okay, so let's, can we not, I want to go back to this mom thing. That's okay, why, okay. Or no, this teacher. Emily Jennifer had wet dream. The, he is the teacher that you wanted to see naked, and this is why you're talking No, he's gay. Way. Oh, that's who it was? It was a, a somebody? He's gay. Oh. What? I'm talking about Jennifer Aniston here. I want her to like like see me naked. You got so defensive about your teacher. I did because I really don't think what happened was fair. And I don't think we have the whole story here. And okay. yes, I think that he should have never done that, period. Like no matter what. But like, I don't know. I'm very upset about it and I don't want to talk about it. Can Nobody we? talks about Celine Dion and, and her husband. I was going to talk about Celine Dion. I was going to say, wait, what? What we, happened? They, their age difference because oh, I'm saying the whole no, thing with him is like it's a, a big age difference, and that's why it's a problem. No, and the kid was under 18, and a stu- his student is much different. Okay, and then Celine Dion. I mean, Renee. wasn't he working? Wasn't she working for him? Kind of. Camera. I don't know. We're back. Are we back? Yeah. Okay. okay. I need to. Our camera turned off, and we had to switch the card. I need to make some clarifications here. Okay. The Jennifer Aniston thing. I'm trying to explain this in the best way that I feel about her. Because I don't want to, like, eat her pussy. I don't have, like, wet sexual dreams about her. I have dreams where we meet each other. And it's almost like, like, I it's I, I feel this connection to her that's, like, literally otherworldly. As if, she, like, it's a maternal thing. Like, I want her to, like, raise me or something. Or, like, I want her to, like know me and love me you want her to see the whole you exposed raw and everything and i I think you have a respect for her too and and i want her to love me and i think you're that means you're in love with her no i feel the (laughs) same thing i feel a a much less but similar thing about celine dion she has that presence that's why her music video imperfections like moves me because i'm like you have a power over me like it's this thing where i'm like I want, I feel like you are my mom or like this weird, uh, I, mean, I, I can't believe you're not relating at all. I, I mean, I have a lot of, I have like moments with celebrities where I have a lot of respect for them and I'm like, wow, they're amazing at what yeah, they do. That's and not I, what I, but then I actually get envious and maybe that's because I'm like, that's my, the Scorpio in me. Well, also and I I'm will like, say, I wish I had that. Celine, I have the same thing with Cher, <laughs> but less. Jennifer Aniston is number one. Cher, Celine Dion, and Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston, I started watching Friends when I was like five. It's a whole childhood for So you. I think it's really like for me, I remember seeing her on Friends and like being like, I have to be just like her. And I was like five years old. So I think it probably is so deep rooted in my psyche yeah. of like, she is all of what it means to be woman that I feel such a connection to her where like, I see everything she posts and everything she does, and I'm like, like she really feels like a, like a like godlike to me. Wow, it's actually pretty. You crazy. know what? I really hope you get to meet her one day. I do too. I really I put her in fucking curly pubes. Oh my god! For the sake of your life, I hope you meet her. I really you, feel, and that's the thing is, like, I, I feel I think, like she knows and me, and I think that when you do, she will understand <laughs> your passion right away. She'll just be like, "Wow, this girl!" I think you might be her number one fan. I might be. I have dreams about her meeting me and being like, "Emily, it's been <laughs> you." <laughs> I have dreams where we're best friends and, and like, she'll be like, Emily, I've been waiting for this moment. You know what? I wish, cause I've had dreams about someone like recurrent dreams, but mine were like Chuck Bass from Gossip Girl. Oh, and I'm boring. like, why the hell was that my dream? Well, Jennifer no, I have Aniston, dr- Aniston is much more respectable. I really think she is like the all being you know Perfect. what? I actually need to stop you because I don't yeah. think you'll ever stop. I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I actually, move on. I actually don't think I'll you'll go ever on. stop. I will truly go on for she, hours you about could. her. Mm-hmm. I had a really, really bad week. Okay. And I know it goes there a lot with me, but I'm feeling a lot better now. Every time I come, mm-hmm. I come into the city, I immediately feel better. But I got kicked out of the bar again. Yeah, Faye, what happened? Um, I got kicked out of the bar. It was my sister's birthday. We went to a we went to a vineyard, 
And then I, well, I got flown into a vineyard. That's pretty badass. I got yeah, flown in. Your dad walked, flew my in. dad flew me in. And then I walked across the way, got sl- sloshed at this vineyard because my sister wanted me to make a speech for her on her birthday. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking make you a birthday speech. So I felt the need to drink a lot because I was like, I'll do this for her. Well, did you make the speech? No, I okay. didn't even end up making the speech because I got so trashed that I was like, fuck you. I'm not making the speech. I had so much liquid confidence to be like, no, yeah, I'm not doing that. So then um, we me, me and my brother's girlfriend go back to her apartment after and we take shots and then I go to the bar and I, dr- I guess I drink more on my sister's birthday. And then we and then I was in the dining room where people were eating and alone alone. And I was FaceTiming with yet again another ten, or, or a hinge guy. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you're being too loud. We need you like disruptive. We need you to quiet down a little bit like the, you can't do this. And I'm like charging. I stole their charger from like oh, the, behind the bar of a restaurant. Yeah. And then I start. I was singing la- like songs really loud. And they were like, you need to stop. This is the third time I've been kicked out of this bar. Oh, my God. The third time. So then um, I don't stop singing. And they were like, listen, you need to get out. Like, this is ridiculous. I told the guy to fuck off. And I walk out of the bar. And then... How I, do you know? All, do you remember any of this? No, I was told this. Dominic, oh. my brother, told me this. My mom was there. And she was like, you weren't even bad. But, like, <laughs> my mom must have been trash because... And she wants to protect you. She wants to protect me. And she knew I was so upset about it that she was like, yeah. you were fine. But my mom could have also been trash too because yeah. when she orders a drink she orders like a martini she orders a cosmo, a cosmo. with no cranberry yeah so like, vodka. And she's like fill it up with vodka yeah so i walk out and then i put my hood on i was wearing a jacket and i come back in and i'm like hi i'm like hi um can I, a table for three and like they were like no get out <laughs> yeah. get out and then i was you in, thought your hood would disguise you and then i was in the street <laughs> but like what the f- so i'm actually banned from a bar now they can't ban you you're there all the time and so is your family and your sister like they're not gonna ban you oh my sister had a crazy night too i know you te- she, I, she really do you really want to put it on blast i mean i i asked her and she was like please but it was so baller of me okay tell us what happened so as we all know, my sister's going through a divorce. Yeah. And her house is up for sale. You know, she felt like her, her life was crumbling. And she was like, you know, I want my 31st birthday to be amazing. Yeah. Because I need it to be. I need people, like, people around me. Absolutely. So she got lit. She got really drunk. Uh-huh. She got very confident. And she took some girl behind <laughs> She took some girl behind the bar and put her in a truck and what? started making out with her. Oh my god! A girl, this happened first, and then everyone gets kicked out of the bar. And she was like, "I was wondering where everyone went. You know, like I got kicked out. Everybody left. Gabby uh-huh. was left there, and I was like, you know, you wanted to stay. Like, you, yeah. you just wanted to be alone there. And so then she's sit- she has a tiara on, and it's like last call and Uh she's there's a guy sitting on a bench with a pocket square so she said he looked like approachable Uh so she goes up to him and she takes her tr off and she was just like she's like i'm she's like i'm i'm waiting for my uber but i can't find you know like i can't find anyone to drive me home so then she go she takes him home and then in the morning her ex-husband comes home to wish her happy birthday (laughs) Oh my God. And walks in and they're both naked and he just has his tie around his neck. Oh my God. And he was like, is this your idea of a wellness plan? But honestly, she didn't even want to get the divorce. So this is like, yeah, it's not fair. It's not really fair. But can you imagine though? Like if that, that would be hard to walk into. I mean, it would be hard to walk into, but she did everything in her power to try and make it work. Oh no, I'm not taking that away. I I just, I'm like, so then he was like, he, he left the house. He came back in and he was like, Gabriella. And she came back downstairs and then he was like, we have like plans today. Like you're, you're so drunk. And this is on her birthday. He was like, you're so drunk. And we have plans with the realtor. Like we need to talk to them. And she's like, just tell them I'm, I'm in appointments all day. Okay. I'm busy. So she like, didn't even care and that oh probably God. drove him crazy. crazy so i mean he tried to be spiteful and he tried to keep the dog at night whatever my mom my mom went there and got the dog back my sister yeah. was, i don't know i don't even know but like i think good for her absolutely i mean i feel like she went through 
for like the duration of this podcast's existence, she's been going through this divorce and it's been like so hard on her. And on her birthday, for her to get ass from boy and girl. I know. And in her bed. I and then like, you revenge. Need to remember how special you are. Yeah. And amazing. And now this dude has a southern accent, like we like. Okay, I already right. I already appreciate that. Uh-huh. They've hung out every single day. And he can cook? He can cook. Okay, but them hanging out every single day. I know it's a little crazy. But flag it's, goes up. It's I know. It's like a little bit of the like the incel thing from last time. Like no, talking but every no, day. no, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more like rebound vibes. Yeah, definitely rebound vibes. And he probably loves to be loved. Yeah, I think he he could be a mama's boy, you know. Oh, he's definitely Who loves a, he, a woman. You know to, what? It's really funny you say that because she said that he talked about his mom a lot. Yeah, yeah. So he loves a woman's touch. But every like I hooked up with the South African and he never fucking called me. He never called me again. My sister. Did he gets, love his like, mom? No, I Is don't know. Oh. I'm just saying, like, that's so oh. cool. Like, that's where her one night stand goes. Good for you, Gab. I'm proud of you. Yeah, but that's. Have you ever had that happen and then you, like, aren't into them? Most of the time. Right. So it's Most like, of the time. But it's. But I'm, I'm saying, like, I mean, hey, maybe she really likes him. I feel like if that were me, you're looking at my hair. I'm not. Okay. You must be nervous because you've never worn a barrette before. Yeah, and you're I have barrettes, barrettes in my hair and I'm nervous about them. Um, I feel like if it were me, if I was coming out off of a marriage that like, and a divorce that really upset me, the first guy that I like had a little bit of a fling with, I would be in love with the idea of it. And you know what? That's how my serial dating happened because every relationship was a rebound. Right. Right. I think a lot of people are that way. Yeah, yeah, I actually think you're right. You're so vulnerable, and you're like, okay, I'll take this one. Yeah. It's just that easy. Because it's an idea of someone else being able to fill a hole. Yeah, you need that. that you just need can't that. Fail. You can't be alone. Wow. Yeah. I'm doing great. Yeah. I haven't had someone in a long time. I felt so bad Millions for you. Millions of boyfriends on it. <laughs> <laughs> so many in a relationship forever. I felt so bad because last night you were texting me about how, like, you feel lost yeah and sad well because i was so excited about this freelance position and then today i got into work and you know now i'm now i'm a freelancer Wait, are you wearing the same lip color as last time i don't know what did i wear last time i forget what you said but it looks- i'm always wearing stripped down liner so yeah okay no this is different this is kylie jenner bear and then i'm using a little bit of mac boy bait lip gloss cream sheen Okay, I want it because okay, it looks I'll great. Get you this. Yeah, I'll thank you. you. This. I it still looks, get my discount, and I can tell by looking at it on you that it'll look good on me. Okay, so yeah, I'll give it to you. Now, Are you still putting a, nipple cream on your lips? Always putting nipple cream on my lips. That's good. I mean, it's the best <laughs> thing for your lips. It's a, yeah. Don't they look like less crusty than usual? That's why I keep noticing your lip color because I'm like, your lips look plump. I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I think the nipple cream is excellent, and I looked it up, and it's really the best thing for your lips. Guess what? My mom texted me the other day. What? She was like, "Em, have you heard about celery juice being good for psoriasis?" Wait, psoriasis? Yeah. I didn't know it was good for psoriasis. Well, it must be good for everything. I know. And she, I was, I feel like it's another instance where I was like, all right, celery juice. And then my mom was like, Em, guess what the new thing is? Celery juice. You know what, though? I did celery juice for a long time. I did it for a month straight. And after a month, you start to think like you would start to see results or feel results from whatever it's supposed to be doing for you. It did absolutely nothing for me. Well, except give me brutal diarrhea. Okay. It was like really bad. I was like, am I like, there's something wrong with me. I thought I was sick. It was diarrhea every single day, every morning, like clockwork diarrhea. Ew, that's so, diarrhea sucks. Well, because, and it's like, who has time to have diarrhea every morning? Have diarrhea, but juice, (laughs) celery every single morning, wait 30 minutes, and then have your breakfast. And then have diarrhea. And then, then you have to make time for the diarrhea. It's like, just just wait to clock, schedule in, pencil in diarrhea. The first time I blended the celery, oh my God, and then you get all the fiber. Mm. That's an enema. Like, uh, literally, uh, you're on the floor with cramps. Like, oh my do God. not blend your greens. You will get fucked up. Oh, my God. It's like the the grumbling, bubbling, stewing stomach. Oh. Ooh, it's not good. Like, can't stand up straight stomach. It's really, really not good. I actually, you know, something I've been having that actually is making a difference in my life, and I talked about it a little bit last week, is broth. Oh, God. I've been on the broth kick. Well, you look really skinny. Thanks, but I've been eating it actually. No, you're being too nice. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. Yeah. No, uh, true. Um, 
I've been having broth and I didn't know <laughs> that it was like such a health benefit thing until I started. Like, I go to this one place called Brodo. It's really expensive, but like that's my one thing I let yeah. myself have because I will spend all my money on food and things that I put in my mouth. So um, I go to Brodo. It's on 75th and Broadway. And it's like they, their only thing they do is broth. And so I keep going there to get broth. Yeah, like I think drinking you're burping it, up broth as you speak. I know. <laughs> I keep drinking it. Um, you drink it like a coffee cup, like broth in a cup. And they have like beef broth, chicken broth, like all these different broths. And then you like different like spices they put in it and whatever. And I was reading about it when I was waiting in line for it the other day. And it's like apparently when you have broth and, and you drink it on an empty stomach, like the things it does for the enzymes in your stomach or something, it like breaks down or and reestablishes the bacteria in your stomach. Gives you a healthy gut. Gives you a healthy gut. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of times they say it is good for weight loss because like it's like a daily cleanse and like builder back upper type of thing where like it really makes your stomach like good at its you job. Know what? I should focus on my gut because I've been focusing weight way too much on my brain all my supplements for my brain and all yeah. my food is for my brain but i your need to gut's focus a on big my, thing too your gut i mean everything's connected everything's connected and i realized like knock on fucking wood but like ever since i've been having broth i'm like never nauseous anymore i never get stomach aches wow. like i literally i have it like once a day that's how i felt on keto it's really nice like i don't feel like i don't feel as skinny as i did on keto but i do feel like the broth is really like literally just putting a coat on my digestive system <laughs> When I told you I was doing, I was like, I'm just really not doing good. Like I had like an existential crisis. I'm like, really? Like I had a crying, like panic attack. I wasn't, and you were like, you should have some broth. <laughs> Did <laughs> I were, say that? No, you said, you said that before I came in today. You're oh, like, yeah. don't worry, I'll, I'll make I was you like, food. You broth? You're like, do you want broth? And I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, broth. I'll come in for the broth. Well, I don't know what broth you could have because you're a vegetarian. Well, everything seems to have chicken stock in it. They definitely have a vegetarian broth. We talked broth. about this, bouillon. Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. the bouillon. If they have yeah. the vegetarian bouillon, then right. I could have it. Also, though, um, I felt like two things I want to say. One, I felt bad for you yesterday because everything you were saying to me over text when you were having a bit of a breakdown was literally everything I said to you a couple of weeks ago when I had my terrible yeah. week. And I literally just had to hold up a mirror to you and be like, Sophia. I know. And I felt like I like I felt like. I was saying the same things you were saying too. So I was just like, this has happened before. Like I know know. that it's stemming from like exactly the same place it was stemming for you. I know. And it's crazy because you could be so aware of that and still feel I know the anxiety really takes Mm -hmm. over and starts like your mind can really run like your thoughts. Like your anxiety runs everything. Anxiety. If you give anxiety. I started to think I was like, I'm like, I'm not even capable of having a conversation with anyone anymore. And I realized the root of that problem is that I work in retail and like I'm standing and sometimes there's no one there for like five hours and I have to make small talk with like the fucking guy at the sunglass hut for like <laughs> hours and I'm like he, he's the manager of sunglass hut we probably don't have anything to talk about like it's not me it's just he literally asks me today like he he's like um he was like he, did you ever try peanut butter and jelly I was like peanut butter <laughs> is this the conversation we're gonna have I was like yeah I've tried peanut butter and jelly he's like do you like it and I'm like uh, I mean, no, like, why are we talking about this? Like, this is the fucking dumbest shit in the world. <laughs> like, of course I've got peanut butter and jelly. I'm from America. Like, I just, I don't want to talk about this. And so now we're having conversations about sandwiches and I'm going home having an existential crisis. And I'm like, I can't even talk to people anymore. No, it's because sunglasses, like, guys, ask me about PB and J. Have you ever had peanut butter and jelly? Of course I have. And then I'm do you know America. what a bitch I sounded like? I was like, no, I'm more of a ciabatta mozzarella truck truffle oil kind of girl he was like oh my god and then he was like i'm not that rich and i was like uh, this conversation's bad 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 <laughs> i actually you know what I, I i could have a conversation about peanut butter and jelly because i'm a big fan i mean just the the but conversation the starter it, like we're walking so we're standing at he's standing at the hut i'm standing at the mac counter and he just he, he shouts from across <laughs> the way because there's a hallway and he's like have you ever had peanut butter and jelly and i'm uh, like and you have to answer and, like, and i was like what and then he was like, have you ever had peanut butter and jelly? And he was like, and I was like, 
Yeah, I have. And I literally was like, what are you talking about? I know. And isn't it the worst? Because when you're in those situations, you want so badly to be like, why are we doing this? No, small, we don't have to do this. Small talk fucking kills me. Yeah. And the reason I've been feeling so bad is because I've had to do it for a whole year. Yeah. During slow season, it's miserable. Yeah. And then today, my day literally consisted of that. A yeah. bunch of that. And then we had to put up the holiday, uh, the holiday stands and they came with like little gloves, like white, oh, little gloves, like white mittens because they, they don't want to put like, um, fingerprints on it. So now I'm like sitting talking about peanut butter jelly wearing white mitt- mittens, <laughs> screw driving stands. Like it's so ridiculous. That would lead me into I'm a like, mental hole. I'm in a, a breakdown. I'm in a great depression. I'm Le Miserable right now. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. And then I got my period today and I was like, oh, oh, I'm not crazy. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm just fucking bleeding. Yeah. That's why. I know that always happens to me every time. I think the last time I had a big, I came home after an amazing day and I started weeping <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've had all those thoughts of like, I'm not even funny. I'm not even funny. None of what I'm doing is worth anything. No one even likes me. Like no. genuinely believed all those things. I started and it, I mean, I believe, I, got in, I believe in this stuff like it's Scorpio season so this is the, well it's about, no, it's about to be it's about to be it's coming like 20, 20 week. the 22nd or something 23rd. but you could feel it when it when it's about to come and it's the season of like darkness and, and like change. emotions and like deep feelings and, and like death and rebirth it, a death and rebirth and like what is the meaning of life and I do this every October November December it gets cold I want to just go inside I want to quit all my jobs yeah until like November comes around and it's like my birthday month I was born and then I find something new because I was born. Yeah. I was born in you November. literally die and are reborn every November. Every single November. That's exciting. I'm hitting my year mark. You are. I've been. You ca- really are. Yeah. I mean, I I make it so obvious when I'm about to quit a job, too. I've just been using my sick days nonstop. I know. It's so. F- oh, I really wish and I could talk about my campaign I'm working on. Why can't we? can't you? because okay. it's not out yet. And like, Is I there a way around that? No, I refuse okay, to well, get fired. It's all right. I refuse to but get no, fired. But no, I've been really using sick days and I feel bad because I call out like so much and then like i'm like i'm sick and then i make like a million stories yeah you don't even try and hide it anymore. i don't even try and hide it anymore i don't i but i guess that really means you must not care so you should leave it's not that i don't care it's just it, i mean i don't care and you don't I'm respect just, the job anymore. i just think about like right before i go in i'm like i'm gonna stand there for five and a half hours, watch dust settle, and then talk about <laughs> PB and J and wear mittens. And I don't you know what do that. though. I I will tell you, like anytime I've had a job that's like in service or retail, which is twice, or actually no, I guess Edgewood kind of counts in high school. Anytime I've ever had a job like that, I feel like no matter how much you love it or how much it has to do with what you want to do or whatever, when you work at retail or in service, you reach a breaking point with mm-hmm. the place you're at yeah. and you start to resent it and like really hate it. Yeah. And that's when you have to make a change. Yeah. The only place I didn't really get that way with was Cornelia street cafe. Cause they closed. I didn't quit. And I actually enjoyed it so much working there, yeah. but I probably would have hit a point with that. And everyone I worked with had hit their point and they hated the place. Yeah. And I feel like it's hard to work in customer service, basically. I never got and that not, way with Silk Road. I was going to say, I, I love that. Silk Road. Yeah, I'm just trying to make you feel better. No, and I But do I also feel, do believe what I'm saying. No, I do feel better already. And I know I, it feels better to get to the root of the problem. I'm like, oh, it's not me. It's just all of these things that like, these are the reasons I'm feeling this way. Right. And, and also, I can change them. The fact that you feel so strongly about it means that you are speaking into existence a beautiful opportunity to come your way. Also, I know that I, I to, really believe that yeah. also, lately, especially I'm yeah. like what you put out will come back to you. Oh my gosh. We really swapped places. Didn't we? <laughs> we really we fucking did. swapped Give places. Give me like two weeks. I'll be down on the floor. And then I'll be up and then we'll yeah, just, it'll yeah. just, it's just like a, a cycle. We're no, all, but I also like life is. this time of year, I really feel like I'm starting to realize I don't think I like summer as much as I thought I did because I feel like whenever it's summertime, I always feel like I should be somewhere else. Or like, I feel like it's, everybody's all over the place. I feel lazy and weird. And like, once September, October comes back around, I feel like I get my shit together again. I like that the weather gets a little cooler. My wardrobe, I usually get new clothes. I'm not like that. My wardrobe's nice. I'm more of a summer girl all the way. 
I, I, love I just feel summer. like I'm I don't have my footing in the summertime. No, I I never feel good come fall. Winter fall is, fall is my favorite season. Winter's good. It's because you're so used to that. I feel like you grew up going to school. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> you're used to, you know, fall comes around and you're going back it's to school and you're like, I'm getting my binders. I'm getting my yeah. books. I'm getting my backpack and I'm getting ready to go to school. I getting everything school. together. Back to school shopping. Yeah. And Absolutely. I think that I, you know, I didn't. So I never had to get my shit together. Summer's always been my time. I do love summer, but mm. in terms of like how I feel, I love summer socially and fun wise, but yeah. like in terms of how I feel about my life and where I'm going and my career, like I hate summer. I feel like I'm so un- productive i'm so judgmental of myself for not being productive and then fall comes around and i feel like i like get my wheels back and i'm yeah. like let's start moving yeah i feel like you're always moving anyway i know you you'll always say that to me but it's so lately i've been moving you really been so busy i've been working 10 wait. hour days been, i had to wait outside your job because you were just still working and even then i, I should have been there till eight o'clock but That's i was insane. like i can't insane but I did. I finished all my work for the day. I wouldn't have left. But you still smack without. a smile right on your face. I do. You know why? I realized I am someone who thrives off of being busy and productive. So like this new job I've been working on, this like new project, it's so much work and it's so much more work than I've ever done for them because I'm editing rather than assistant editing. But it actually is fueling the rest of my life because I'm busy every day. Yeah. I'm like purposeful. People need me. I'm like actually getting a product out. Yeah. And that... I I've come home and been more creative. I feel like I'm more on top of my like stuff I have to do. I like I was on set yesterday. I acted in a short film and I had a rehearsal after that. And I felt like I was so alert and on and like if in I'm my busy zone. And productive, then I feel really good about my life and really good about everything. And that's maybe going that's on. what's going on with you. It's I'm like not you, busy and productive. You're not enough. busy and productive, and you don't and you resent where you work. And you know what? They could say to me in retail, "Well, you can be busy and productive." I'm like, "What? Well, I could fold. I could make the displays and fold the boxes. Yeah, that's me being busy. No." That's like my numbing bullshit that I yeah, can't do. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Oh, I'm not coming back to it. No, you shouldn't. I'm you really gonna. shouldn't because you deserve more. Yeah. You really do. You've, you've and, worked there for so long and like you have such a fire under your ass that whatever is coming next for you is going to truly be yeah. bigger and better. And you know it. Don't yeah, you? No, I totally know it. Yes. I totally know it. You do. I was feeling so bad about myself that I was going to like my psychiatrist and telling him how sad I was and everything. And it's it's actually like that's the root of the problem. I don't need to be on fucking medication. I'm no, dr- you're I'm sad. Drink- I well, I was drinking so much because I was sad about my job when I I got home. Yeah. So he put me on this medication that was going to change the way like I like alcohol tastes to you and it makes it. It makes it so like you don't crave alcohol. And I don't really have alcohol cravings. I just do it because I want to. Yeah, me too. And like I was trying to explain that. He was like, but can you go a full week? And I'm like, I mean, I, I don't know. Like I could. And then I started to get it in my head. I'm like, oh, no, I'm an alcoholic. Like I have to go no. to AA. And even my mom was like, you're not, Sophia. Like you no. don't need to do this. I know. I worry about that too sometimes because like I pretty much I drink every week. Yeah. Like two or three times a week this whole more world, if like, not I mean, like i i don't have like an addictive personality though and i know that about no myself. i know and i know you and i are the same in that way because we tend to diet the same way yeah. we tend to quit things the same like you I've and i done months without alcohol yeah but it's so it's so scary to me that i really i am a hypochondriac and i can convince myself i'm like oh i have this problem and then i'll take a drug because of it no yeah i, I think that's why i was getting so much brain fog because drugs are being pushed? Because drugs are being pushed. I got to change doctors. Yeah, I think you should get someone maybe a little closer to your age and a little more in the new world of psychology. Yeah. I hate shitting on him, but like, come no, on. No, I, I really love him and I love how he listens and I love how far we go you, back. But yeah. like, he, I was like on three drugs. There's something nice about a new perspective and someone who doesn't know you for everything that happened when you I were saw little. this thing online. It was like the pro, like it's so hard to switch your psychologist or your therapist. So someone made like a PowerPoint presentation of like all their traumas. And I was like, I should do this. Yeah. Then yeah. I won't be so anxious about going to a new therapist. Someone was telling me the other day how like, cause I was talking about how I genuinely really get scared about like scary movies movie type of stuff very easily and like John will scare me sometimes and I actually get very very upset and almost start crying and I curl into a ball no I really get like really scared and I'm scared every morning when I come down from the loft I like literally look around because I'm scared I'm scared when I pee I'm scared when I'm here alone I'm so scared 
And I always thought that was just like my fault or something. Like that was like part of my personality. But someone the other day, and this is just like so 2019, told me that like it's PTSD. Like it's actually trauma from when I was younger because I watched so many scary movies and my brothers would scare me and make me think they were real and force me to watch them and then like show me scary shit. And she was like, you, like that was traumatic for you. And so you are reminded of that all that when you're reminded of that, you go into that little kid mode of like, oh my God. Oh my god, stop, stop, stop. And then read it. Like when she told me that, I was like, all right. Oh my god, that's your childhood trauma. But Watch, I'm like your brother's scaring you. N- no, I know, but I mean, what she says on paper technically makes sense because I am so scared, but like so easily scared, and like it really affects me. But like that feels so unfair to call it trauma. I mean, I guess everyone's trauma she was like, that is that actually their own, is though, that is trauma. Like, but everyone's trauma is their own. No, you know? but it's so, I mean, the fact that my trauma gets to be being, now a fucking ghost is going to come out tonight. I'm now not talking about this anymore. Oh my God. Because John's not coming home till late and I cannot know that I'm with. Is it mean to make fun of someone's trauma? Because I want to say right now that your trauma is pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not trauma. If that's that's Emily's trauma. I, just it was I don't so even funny think I can hang. called it trauma. Wait, oh my God, speaking of of John in here and whatever, last night, so remember how last week I was talking about, I was making so much fun of John with the broth and the <laughs> sickness and like, um, like how he was manic. Yeah. And then he was like, baby, broth, like, and how he was such a yeah. man child. Um, so then it was just funny because karma came right back in the ass to, bit, to bite me last night. So yesterday I had like time to kill between two things that I had to be downtown for. So I like, I... In the morning, I started my day off with a piece of Brazilian cheese bread. Because What's a Brazilian? Br- I've heard of Portuguese bread, but not a Brazilian cheese bread. So I went into a coffee shop. Ponte and I was, No. Oh. I was looking at this pastry, just like daydreaming about it. And this girl came up behind me and was like, are you looking at the blah, blah, blah? I don't know what it was called. And I was like, oh, that? And she was like, yeah. She's like, you you actually have to get it. It's wow. that good. Wow. And then I felt socially anxious. If I, like, I didn't if know what didn't to do. do it, yeah. Because you didn't want to hurt her feelings. So then I was like, oh I my God. Like I was like, too. hell yeah. Like, I'm so someone who eats pastries in the morning (laughs) so i get it out of pressure you didn't even want it i did not want it and i get the fucking bread i'm like doing my laundry i just wanted a coffee so i'm eating this cheese bread in the laundromat and then my whole day after that was just shit i get to the set i was on and they had crafty and i had a waffle like i just had a bad day oh no so then for dinner last this is all yesterday so for dinner last night i had um i went to a thai restaurant by myself and got a whole order of crab rangoons Amazing. And then I got a basil udon noodle Ooh. and um, I ate the hill thing. And then I came back here and I like I had my rehearsal, whatever. I come back here. John and I were up to like maybe one. We go to bed and like as we go upstairs and are going to bed, I'm like kind of starting to feel nauseous. Oh, the camera shut camera. off. I'm, I'm starting to kind of feel nauseous. And then I like get into bed. I close my eyes to go to sleep. And um I'm like, I'm laying there and I'm like, oh no. And I I start falling asleep. And then, you know, when you're like in and out of sleep, I was in and out of sleep feeling like vomit was coming up my mouth. I was like, oh no. (laughs) Oh no. I was like, oh no. And and I was, but I was like sleeping. So I was like, oh no. Uh, Like moaning like a crazy person. And John was like, did he see it? No, no, he was like, did he see you doing that? Well, he heard me. He was like, Emily, what? I was like falling asleep. Like there's a caveman in bed. Well, (laughs) no, well, it was the one thing that was cute about it was usually when he fall, when we fall asleep, he like is on his phone and then like I turn over and go to sleep and like we face the other way. But it was cute because I had fallen asleep, but my nausea woke me up as I was falling asleep. You get nauseous a lot. But it was cute because he was like right there and then he was like, what? So it turns out he was holding me in my oh, sleep. Am. But anyway, so, <laughs> ooh, ooh. so the, <laughs> wait, I was making a clip the other day, and never mind. So um, wait, can you tell me? Yeah, now? it was really funny because we were talking about sex, and if we'd give up food or sex, I was making that clip, and I was like, I don't know if I would give up sex, and you're like, Well, you have your baby. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true you got your baby you oh, but i was, I was thinking about God. while you were talking about food i was like that is actually like that gets me horny wait it's so funny because food gets i me love horny. when you call john my baby it sounds because. so perverse like you've got your baby well because i always think of that picture of like that you added to instagram and it's like the woman typing and doing her work and a baby sucking her tit sucking her tit oh, yeah. and then you're like that's my baby <laughs> yeah. well john is my 
Paul and Baiba. And John's your Baiba. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you better be watching the video if you just saw what she just did. <laughs> anyway, I'm so <laughs> nauseous. And John's like, what is going on? And I was like, <laughs> you know what? Rub my teeth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it could be so gross. <laughs> it could get so gross. <laughs> oh, can you do it? What? Rub my teeth. <laughs> You just inhaled like <laughs> your own saliva. Wait, let me finish because you're gonna not be able to stop laughing. <laughs> my I turn into like Chris it's funny Farley like, so fast. The thing I do make him do all the time. Is... <laughs> what the fuck just came out of your mouth? <laughs> Oh, my Did you just croak in my apartment? Did you just croak and die in my apartment? I'm taking the mic away. Oh, you on the tape. <laughs> Sophia just croaked. <laughs> you literally just like, oh, why? No, no, it hurts. Okay. We need to stop laughing because whoever's listening like, might not be laughing. I might have turned just, it off. Just cut out the croak, please. Just cut out the croak. Um, so I was nauseous. You were nauseous. I was laughing so hard, too, because the first thing I sexually asked John to do is I'm like, rub my titties. <laughs> That's like my start jerking me off thing. Anyway, so I'm like <laughs> nauseous. And like, you know, when you get nauseous, ugh, it's different because you live at home. When I get nauseous and I'm here, I am so upset because I need my mom. And if I don't have my mom when I don't feel good, I'm like really upset. And John does not do the thing I need well, I when I don't feel good. Because when I was at Gabby and Michael's and I got, that's when I got really sick. Yeah. Like I was super, I was in that bed and I was like, I'm so fucking pissed. My mom actually came over though. To get you? To take care of to me. To take care of you. Bring me everything I needed. She bought me broth. Right. Oh, that's, see, broth. Yeah. But mom's help. But so, if I can ever finish this story, <laughs> I, I feel nauseous and so I'm literally like, oh my God, and I'm so upset because I start getting into my head about like, Oh my God, do I have food poisoning? Because if I do, I, work tomorrow is going to suck. And like, I'm going to be throwing up at work and I have a big day at work tomorrow. I can't miss it. Like, I started getting in my head. I was like, yeah. oh no, no, no. And John was like, what is going on? What? And I was like, I have to throw up. He's like, go fucking throw up then. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Cause I was really like having a panic, yeah. like a freak out. And so I go downstairs and then I like heave and like some stuff comes out. And then I like purposely left the door open so he could hear everything. Like, and I, I want him to know how much pain I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I wanted all the attention for it. So then I like, I don't really throw up. And I kind of, also he had like, sh I'm sorry, John. He had pooped in the toilet like an hour before. Kay so kid. what was actually <laughs> helping me to heave was I would leave my face on the toilet and whip his shit. Ew! Oh my god, that sucks. That does suck. That um, sucks so bad because but it's, it's not, not. It's not like you're like you're peeing on his shit. You actually have your nose in the toilet bowl and <laughs> yeah. you're forced to sniff it. <laughs> yeah. You're inhaling, and it's not even. It's not even his shit. I'm sniffing like the water after that's been sitting there after his oh shit. Do you know god. what I mean? Like the echoey smell. Oh my god. Anyway, and so, it's like a small toilet bowl that you mm -hmm. have, so it's like almost like a globe wine glass. It's safe the scent <laughs> and and you're forced to sniff it and it's just all contained in that globe yeah, of a toilet bowl <laughs> so i'm heaving and like some some stuff comes out but not nothing substantial not any of the food i had just described to you um so then i like literally hold it down because i decide like no i will not throw up right now you're i will in not charge. have food poisoning yeah. so then i go back upstairs and i was also so cold and it was really annoying to me because I woke up nauseous and was moaning. And I sleep without a shirt on. Yeah. Just sweatpants. That's like my new sleeping outfit. I do just undies. Yeah. Oh, I like to let my, my pussy air out. Uh, so I just wear sweatpants. I should do that because you knew about my yeasty problems, but yeah. I don't. I need undies. That's okay. I have so, cats. Yeah, that's true. And <laughs> once a centipede crawled on my butt. Yeah. Okay. And because we got centipedes in my house. That's true. So I'm shirtless and I woke up so cold because the heat hasn't come on yet. And like my side of the bed is by the window and it's like cold last night. So I'm so cold. So I wake up and I'm like, I'm so cold and nauseous. And he was like, and he literally goes, Oh, you're sick. <laughs> And there is nothing. I got jealous. No. <laughs> oh, good callback. There's something like if if men are so quick to say they are sick and act like a baby, 
I am the opposite. If there's an opposite of that, that is me. I will never accept the fact that I'm sick. I'm like Monica from Friends. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. So when he said that, I got so pissed. I was like, no, I'm not. And he was like, yep, everyone on set had the same thing. Stomach issues, feeling fevery. And I was like, I don't fucking feel. So then I go downstairs, I do my thing. I come back up. And then he was like, I was still, I was like crying. I was like, oh my God, I'm so upset. And he was like, what are you, like, you know what? Fix it's it, better, quick. it's better that John does that to you though, when he's like, oh, you are sick, instead of being like, you're not sick. You would be so much more pissed if he's like, you're not sick, calm down. You know? Oh, well, no, but he, yeah, I guess that's what my ex used to do. Yeah, that's you know, true, the one he would always, I'd be, I feel like shit. I was, he's like, okay, well, like take a nap. You'll be oh fine. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to get even more sick now. Yeah. And I'm going to hopefully I'm get you sick. Yeah. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, tell him. <laughs> um, but so I, I come back upstairs and then he was like, I was like, I don't know what to do. Cause here I'm going like, I'm gonna have to go back downstairs and actually throw up. Yeah. And then he was like, M, M, take a melatonin. And and go and go to sleep. And I was like, No, I, I need to I can't miss my alarms. He was like, three milligrams put under your tongue. Aww. I shit you not, I've never taken melatonin in my life. I think I took it once, but I don't really remember it. I put the melatonin under my tongue and then I like lay down and it starts melting under my tongue and I was like, Will you hold my hand? And so <laughs> I hold melts. his hand and I'm holding his hand and I remember just the last thing I remember last night was like falling asleep holding his hand with the melatonin and it melting in my mouth. It really did Wait, put me right that's out. It's gorgeous. Melatonin never fucking works for me. Really? I need oh, something. but you know I'm like narcoleptic. I, I know, so. and you just it was that was probably that placebo. Was all I needed. <laughs> was, yeah, and it might have been that was the placebo effect. I mean, I like, but like also, what happened to my? I'm body? at the point where I need like two Xanax now. I'm like, I'm gonna need two now. Really? Yeah, well, I need yeah. something a little harder than yeah. a melatonin. <laughs> yeah, give me something hard. You've got, got a drug a tolerance. And a, <laughs> yeah, a whiskey and a Xanax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really, I think the point of me telling that, because my <laughs> logic left brain is confused as to why I just told that entire story, <laughs> was to be like, I made fun of John being sick, and then last night I had an episode that he had to deal with. I don't know, all I know is I heaved and you told that story. <laughs> <laughs> you croaked. <laughs> yeah, you, no, it was, ex, it was coming out of your mouth. I, like, I, that's always the, the laugh that I try and conceal that I do, because I even watch some of I've never heard our, that. No, I In even watch. In 14 <laughs> years I've known you, I've never heard that. You know what? And there's something else I've been doing lately that I notice. Like, if I'm uncomfortable in a situation, have you ever seen me do this? Because my psychiatrist called me out on it. I put my finger on my nose. And he told me that Wait, it's what? No, I literally put my finger on my nose. They and people don't. I swear to God, I put my finger on my nose and then I catch myself doing it. Now uh, you play with your nose ring. No, I literally put my finger on the tip of my nose. Your nails look so good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I didn't yell at this nail tech. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my brother was laughing at that story. Which one? Ryan. He was like, that was so funny when she... I don't think I ever told it on Gufanti. Or is on your not- Instagram story. Yeah, yeah. Also, he said his favorite thing about Gufanti was when you called a vagina with psoriasis a branzino. It's a bronzino. <laughs> a bronzino fish. A branzino. No, it's a bronzino puss. <laughs> bronzino puss. Yeah, that's, that's like top of the line puss. No, it's not. Bronzino? He you said that's what? what psoriasis puss looked oh, like. Oh, that's funny. But I was thinking, like, maybe it's high end. I don't even remember saying that. You know what? I told my friend once that she had a poppy seed bagel puss, and I thought that was the funniest thing in the Wait, world. Wait, who did you tell her again? My friend Devin. She had, like, she had just shaved, and she was, like, trying to, like, have sex with a guy, and she had, like, all these little stubbles. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> she had, like, puss. all those dots from after shaving. And yeah. I was like, you need to let me wax you because right now you have poppy seed bagel puss. <laughs> 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 and she's like, where did you even come up with that? I was like, I don't even know. Poppy seed bagel puss. Know, you always have one. names for things. Well, I've seen so many pusses in my life. No, but you <laughs> you also just like when you t- called my toilet just now a globe. <laughs> I don't you know. said my toilet was like the globe of a wine glass. I'm really creative. <laughs> you are? I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> like I make some really good analogies, huh? You really do. I really do. You really absolutely I'm, I'm do. A, I'm an abstract thinker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You are. Yeah. Um, what was I just gonna say? Fuck. I was gonna. Oh, I I had a party here last weekend. Oh my god, Pete this was here. Is the party house for sure. I know. Pete was here for my party. And we I posted call it a, a pic. house because you can't call this an apartment. It was cool seeing everyone's reaction come in here, and they were like, oh. 
I know. I mean, it's it's huge. Yeah, I was really, really drunk for the whole thing, and I actually don't remember a lot of the happenings inside. I was on the porch on the patio the whole time. We talked about you. We talked about the podcast. We talked about how, how I can't believe it's been this long before I've hosted something. And we were Pete was out there on the porch. Pete and I took photos. I directed. Pete took the photos of people. Oh my god, your picture with Pete was amazing. We, Pete and I had got a really that good picture. That was the best debut of Pete that could have been on Goofon's Instagram ever, ever. I loved it and then i came back inside and there was like a bunch of boys here like like connecticut boys right yeah there's a bunch of boys here That's a i didn't know they came, to the party. they came to oh yeah there were yeah they didn't just show up here there was a party for our friend liz it was her birthday we were all in a bar. Happy birthday, Liz. Happy birthday, Liz. And then after the party, we were like, does everyone, John and I were like, everyone want to come over? And then so, but everyone You need came to do here. more of that. I know. I really know. More I really do. Here. I'm pissed I waited. Now it's so cold on the patio, but whatever. But, I mean, this, this whole area is really nice for a party, though. You don't even I know, need but a it's patio. nice having the two rooms. Yeah, but when you drink, you get hot and going on the patio, it's not even going to be cold. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? People but are going to go outside One anyway. party foul I made at my own party, but I think I did it because I was like, this is my party. <laughs> this I, is my house. I can do what I want to. Everyone was sitting right here where we're sitting in a circle. There was like 15 people here, mostly boys. And I turned and the TV, they were putting music on YouTube. And I was like, everyone hold on. And I put on Celine Dion's Imperfections music <laughs> video. <laughs> You can't and stop I made with that one. everybody watch it. And All the guys and John was looking at me like, "Em, come on, don't." Do that. Because and that's I was something like, "No, you, they must." Yeah, you're in my house. That's something that you would do. You wouldn't do when you're sober. Yes. But like, if you're drunk, you're like, "I just want everyone to understand." Because I really do believe when I watch that, like, if you can't feel what I feel when you watch this, but didn't they all love it? I don't remember. I was Pete, really. Did they drunk. all love it? Do you remember? When I, I did feel that? like Pete. Yeah. No. The no. The everyone loved the party. Music right? Video. When Emily stood there and forcefully you made everyone that? watch it. Do you were you there for that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> were people yeah. looking to the side and like they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, how did on? people react? It was very annoying of I me. Think, I think some people were like into it and some people can <laughs> Just didn't care. I don't think anybody was mad at me. I think I just like did definitely put up my foot on a fire that was happening in the room. I mean You know what I mean? Like there was definitely a buzz going on and I was like, stop! What you're doing? You know that my <laughs> stop the fun. We're all gonna tune in now to Celine Dion well, at I, two a.m. on a Saturday night. You know what? My brother Joey, he is never drunk when he does this. But every time I realize that our whole relationship is him coming home and forcing me to watch YouTube videos. Oh. He's like, hey, hey, come come watch this video, <laughs> and he has such hey, hey. bad ADD that he can't even watch the video all the way through. So I'm like forced to watch all these videos. I've tried so many times in I my life him, to be a YouTube watcher. I'm a YouTube watcher. You are, and I really like. What, do you watch a lot of YouTube videos, Pete? Like, do you go into wormholes on YouTube? I go into major wormholes. I wormhole. don't. I don't. It's like do video it. after video after video. I mean, if I'm already watching something, maybe, but like, I'm never on YouTube unless I'm uploading Goofanti. You know what mindless bullshit I'm watching right now that I'm so. It's not good. With? I wish I was like more in touch with like videos. It's like no I'm Instagram. I'll go. Normal. I'm so obsessed with these videos, and it's like. Um, it's like um, bartender guesses age of uh, age of people. Like, oh, you like clickbaity videos? Well, I guess they're loser. all clickbait. No, and then like um, g- girls rate guys one to ten. It's such mindless <sighs> bullshit. Wait, and then guess who has a criminal record? Oh, I love it. I yeah. could watch it for hours. I mean, that's kind of shit. I I can ag- I can actually agree with you because I was working on a different thing at work the other day, which like a couple weeks ago, which required us to pull footage of like youtubers and like youtube culture and so i had to go look for all these like high quality video of like these youtubers and i was like i I was pulling the footage and i started like i had to watch some of it to make sure it was like good stuff and i started watching this one girl like her coachella video of like her day at coachella and i could not believe like this girl, she was like, "Hey guys, so let, oh, like this, this like is a vlog, still, like a, a vlog. vlog channel. It had like five hundred thousand views. I know there's what a lot of say? channels like that. Is it to do with that? Yeah. What? You could say uh, it. I can't. Oh. You can't. Oh, 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 we can't, we legally uh, can't talk about what it was for. I'll tell you in a second. Already knew. It's the one you're working on. It was for, yeah, okay, he figured that's why he said he can't. Okay, so I, I was pulling these videos and I was looking at it. 
month. She's going, hey guys, like, welcome to my channel. So I'm going to Coachella today. Oh, I'm in like such a mood today. Like, I just like don't really know what's going on. I'm like basically having the worst day of my life. <laughs> and um, literally just And like, like her that. nails are like 10 inches long. She's like, anyway, she's sitting in her black G class, like Mercedes. She's like, anyway, it's like my life like literally could not get any worse. I'm like having a breakdown, but like whatever. And she like has <laughs> sun, giant sunglasses on. This is a 20 minute video. I watched the whole thing. And I, then I watched like three other videos of hers. And then she like, okay, so I'll show you like what's in my trunk. And like, so we go to the back and we look at her trunk. It's my birth control. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, and she's like, so I have this. I'm like, really excited. But they, I think these like shoes are really cute. I'm like, probably gonna wear them. Oh fuck, my bangs are like out. Of I'm probably gonna wear them. Like, and then she brings the camera back around to the front, and then she puts the tripod on the dashboard, and then the tripod falls over. She's like, oh, tripod, get up. Mind you, this is an edited video, so everything that's in it was a choice. She keeps filming herself. Holy trying shit. She includes the part where she's trying to get the tripod up. She's like, stay up, stay up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, my fucking tripod then it, it, the tripod falls so she gets down by the shift in her car and is down here the tripod is facing the floor she's like so i guess i'll do the rest of it like this and she's like on the ground talking and vlogging and i was like oh my god oh my god this exists you know, and everyone's watching it and i couldn't stop watching is it is she weird looking or something no she's like, beautiful and her mom is like famous and she's just like one of those girls who lives in la and is just like kind you of know famous whose vlogs are just like this and i'm addicted to watching them and i feel really bad that i'm addicted it's and it's because she's emaciated and she's so anorexic but she has a vlog just like that and she Ooh. talks about absolutely not her name's eugenia cooney and she like if you look her up she's like i shouldn't be smiling she is so <laughs> emaciated and so skinny but her whole vlog is she's like hi guys i'm just gonna show you the new outfits i got and then she just puts on her outfit she's like yeah this one's really cute i don't know what you guys think you guys have been really commenting asking about my weight and i think i'm fine and she has millions of views yeah they because asked her to go on John, the doctors she wouldn't go because she'll get like yeah but i think she was offline everyone made like rumors on reddit that she died and i was like following the whole thing oh my God. she didn't die she had to like get checked in somewhere because she's like too skinny way too skinny and she's still still too skinny right it's really scary eugenia cooney eugenia cooney and you know something fucked up what my ex-boyfriend showed my mom that video and my mom like used to have an eating disorder and he was like how funny is this I was that like, she got that she that this girl has that many views and i was like why would you do that ew he was so terrible what a dick. How, he was so terrible oh my god so awful i john said the other night he made a comment that I think is something, a good note to leave everyone on to think about and maybe give me your quick opinion on it. He was like, I think that people like that are more, I, I, hmm, how do we phrase it? He was like, I don't, I think it's less crazy to be a porn star. Less crazy to be a porn star. Because it is definitely less crazy to be a porn oh, star. Oh, see, I, there's something about the idea of being a porn star that like morally shut, like flips a switch in my brain. That like, cause he was like, mm. we were listening to a podcast where a, por a porn star was on a guest on the podcast uh, and she I, was pregnant. I, I watched one too. And then I was like, oh my God, she's pregnant. And he was like, yeah, well, I was like, that's just so weird for me to think that like she does all this porn and she's pregnant. And he was like, there's a lot more fucked up people out there than porn stars. And oh, I was like, 100%. No, man. I know. But why does it rub me? Well, L Loft, way. the channel I love on YouTube, he does chatting with and he did chatting with a porn star. And this girl was totally like, she was very smart. She like went to a really great college. She was like going to get her doctorate degree and she decided to be a porn star. And she seems to be like really okay with it. And like, I, actually, I just never believe that they are. I know it's really hard to believe that, but people are different and people are actually just like the way you love sex. People really love love sex so much no like, i feel like if you're a porn star you don't love sex the way i do i feel like you see it as a trans like a, a com like something to make a you don't look at it the way that i do because you can have it with anybody and for money and for performance i mean it's a it is a, i see sex well, as something so valuable that i can't imagine but they're people but they're performers i know but to, but uh yeah you know there what i mean we go. they're we'll performers leave. and they can act Who's to say that they can't there, have real loving sex too? It's not to say that they can't have real loving sex. It's I don't know. to say that like they would make a, they I, would make themselves known for like. It's that. really weird though because I've been, I've had this conversation when I'm totally saying what you're saying. 
So like, I don't really know what I truly believe. I don't believe. know what I believe either. I don't know what I truly believe. Ask me believe. tomorrow and I'll be like, you know what? That's they're owning their body. And like, I don't I know, know what I believe. I know for me, I would never be able to be one. Me neither. I would never be able to be one. Never. But I, if you are a porn star, I think, I mean like kudos to you i know because i just can, I, like if you could deal with it like that yeah it's just like shutting your dissociating from yeah that which act. tells me that something's amiss well, you or like can you really be a porn star and not care at all like, i don't know i just don't i don't know yeah there's a, something there's to that, think about that youtuber trisha paytas t- do you know who that is no she looks like a barbie doll she's like oh yeah yeah and she talks really fast yeah <laughs> like that kind of voice yeah she she talks about it in like a very negative way and it was because she dealt with a lot of trauma so like i think uh, it depends on the porn star really depends well that's food for thought for our listeners Someone told me that i had a porn star face the other day (laughs) that's it why because you wear makeup they were just like you have the face of a porn star and then someone also told me that i have a plastic surgery face and i was like you were so kind Thank you. <laughs> I was like, that's so nice. That's funny. I got a tat face. Tat face. Okay. Thank you for listening to Gufanti Burnett's Is Porn Good or Bye? <laughs> what did you learn from this podcast? What did what did you learn? Hmm. That I'm not I mean, I learned not to let my anxiety become reality. Become reality. And I learned that I the love I feel for Jennifer Aniston is not normal and is sick. It's different. Thank you. Thank you for listening. We love you. Subscribe, like, listen, favorite, share, send questions. Please send questions. I keep saying send questions and I don't follow up on it. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you. Thank you.